Hello everyone, it's Oliver Harper here and Happy New Year. Today I'm going to be going through my latest Laserdisc pickups. I haven't done an update video in a couple of months uh, on my collection and I've got a few more titles to show you. At the moment I'm currently working on Batman Begins as my next retrospective. Um, last time I did a video my office was the other way around, I've kind of changed everything recently. Um, also changed my editing software, I was using Final Cut Pro 7 for so long. Uh, a bit of a I'm, a bit, I'm a bit of a stubborn prick when it comes to like editing and um, I, I tried Adobe Premiere and I didn't particularly like it, even though it's quite similar to um, Final Cut Pro 7. And uh, there was a new update for Final Cut Pro 10, which is 10.3, and I had a go with that, um, demoed that, and I thought, oh, this is really good. And I got, kind of got used to the magnetic timeline, which is a bit of a, a bit of a pain in the ass to use, and sort of the events and project settings. Um, it makes it a little bit daunting to use at first, but once you get your head around it, it's really good. And it's kind of sped up my rendering times um, by like double. You know, I can export a video and get it all finished far quicker. I used to, once you finished a review, you know, you've got to wait an hour to it to render like the website bar I had, and you've got to export it, which is another hour, then you've got to upload the thing, and, and, and um, that'll take a while. So you end up adding like four hours to, you know, your kind of the finish time when you've done a review. And then we finally got Pro 10. Um, you know, it's always rendering in the background, so it makes the whole process a lot quicker. And exporting takes, you know, half an hour maybe instead of an hour. Um, so that's, you know, made my job a lot easier. And um, so, you know, at the moment I'm working on Batman Begins. The last retrospective I did was Westworld. Um, some people are like, you know, why are you taking so long to do another review? It's like, pff, it was Christmas, you know, the last couple of weeks, so I did need some time off. But Batman Begins will be online probably late next week. Um, what I'll do now is show you a quick snippet of the trailer I've done for the review. My bets lost the way. That's frightened me. This time my enemy shared my dread. What's that? Tunnel? Oh, you wouldn't be interested in that. Does it come in black? Well, I hope you enjoyed that little clip. Um, now, I'm going to go straight into the Laserdisc pickups. The first title is a Batman film. It's Tim Burton's 1989 classic. Uh, no extra features. Um, very kind of bog standard release. Widescreen. Dolby surround sound. The Dolby surround sound mix is brilliant on this. It's really good, very loud, wonderful PCM uncompressed track. Um, chapter stops, nothing spectacular. The uh, previous seller kept it in great condition, so it's, I'm quite happy with that. And he got five pound as well, bargain. Next we have The Muppets Christmas Carol. Um, I sadly didn't watch this over Christmas, so I totally forgot about it. Um, so I'll probably watch it, you know, next Christmas. Um, letterbox release, Dolby surround sound, nothing spectacular. Chap stops. Um, I mean, I really enjoyed this film when I was growing up, so um, so I, hopefully I'll remember next Christmas to watch it. <laughs> next, we have The Saint with Val Kilmer, widescreen edition, uh, Dolby Digital Sound, with the uh, with a commentary by the director. Um, it's a pretty crap movie, to be honest. It's just a bit dull. Um, I watched it when I was younger. I thought it was a bit rubbish, so I thought I'd give it I'd give it another go. And yeah, it's still not very good. So don't expect me to review this anytime soon. Next we have The Long Kiss Goodnight, widescreen edition uh, with Dolby Digital Sound, directed by Randy Harlan and written by Shane Black. Uh, so you've got fantastic dialogue throughout, very funny movie. Um, Gina Davis is okay, not really a big fan of her, but Samuel Jackson is great in mostly everything he does. Um, the ending is superb, it has one of the best explosions on film. Uh, I think this giant petrol tanker explodes on a bridge. So good. So um, I will review this movie at some point because um, it definitely needs more love and attention. People seem to forget about this movie. Next we have Empire of the Sun, Steven Spielberg's classic. A bit of an underrated film, Not ever, most people seem to forget about this film. Um, gatefold, <coughs> Gatefold edition. Um, in the Gatefold, it's not that interesting image. It's just a, Christian Bale, one of his early roles, uh, fantastic performance by him. Uh, comes with a making of, um, widescreen edition, picture transfer is not too bad, the sound's 
PCM Dolby Surround, so it sounds pretty good as usual. Um, typical Warner Brothers release, has that awful kind of strip down the side here, makes it look very 80s, despite many discs, you know, I think Warner Brothers are still releasing titles in the early 90s with this design, so it kind of dates it a little bit, it makes it look a bit rubbish, but um, fantastic movie. Bloody long as well. Next we have The Right Stuff, uh, directed by Philip Kaufman. Um, I've not seen this film before. Uh, I yeah, picked it up on Laserdisc recently. It was like uh, about six quid free postage. Couldn't, couldn't say no to that. Um, won four Academy Awards, so the film is probably very good. <laughs> um, so I look forward to seeing this, but it's like 193 minutes long. So mm, it's going to be one of those kind of like, when I've got nothing to do kind of Sunday afternoons sort of plough through this. So I, I tested it out the other day, the picture's the pitch not too bad. Um, kind of a late, it's got, well, when did this come out? Well, it is probably, uh, it was 1993, so Warner Brothers have kind of got rid of that silver strip they often have, it's on the back there, but they haven't got it on the front anymore, which is a good thing, because I hated that. Next up, we have Johnny Mnemonic. Uh, it's a Japanese version, um, six minutes longer than the theatrical cut that's out in Europe and, and the USA. Uh, doesn't have Brad Fidel's score either, apparently. Uh, comes with uh, sort of production notes, which are in Japanese, so I can't read those. Um, I've never, I, I've seen the theatrical cut, I've never seen this version. So hopefully there's a big difference, but only six minutes is not gonna make a kind of a mediocre movie far better, you know. So um, I checked out the picture quality, it's pretty good. Um, I don't think it has Dolby Digital. No, it doesn't. Just always around. The US version uh, is prone to laser rot, so I'd avoid getting hold of that unless you have like a your player that can play PAL titles, and the PAL one should be fine. But yeah, Japanese one was is perfectly fine. Has no issues with laser rot. Now this film looked utter toilet, so I had to get it, which was TC two thousand. Um, it's got Bello Young in it, who's on Bloodsport. Uh, Double Impact and uh, Enter the Dragon and Billy Blanks. Uh, I think he does exercise videos, doesn't he? I, I can't remember what he did. Um, you can get this on YouTube. I mean, people have uploaded it like four times. Um, so I look forward to seeing this. It looks hilariously bad and it's got the bad guy from I Come in Peace in it. Um, I'll probably do a video special on this very soon. Uh, so look, watch out for that with me, Duncan and Richard. Hopefully it will be hilariously bad as, as I'm expecting. Next we have How to Get Head in Advertising, uh, Bruce Robbins' second feature after With Nell and I, um, Criterion Collection. Now, this is kind of a bit of a bare bones Criterion version, which basically just comes with the trailer, colour bars, and, um, and the transfer was supervised by the DP. And sort of, uh, I think they've got an excerpt here from a, from a review, I think it is. Uh, yeah. Not that exciting in terms of its additional stuff. It was going cheap again, free postage, like six quid. Um, apparently, this film totally bombed at the box office. It was a huge failure. Uh, it's got apparently it's got some interesting ideas in it that don't really kind of work that well within the movie. Um, so I mean, I like you know, I love With Nail and I, and Richard E. Grant is always a joy to watch. So um, I'm going to go in watching it with very low expectations, and hopefully it will surprise me, and I'll be like, oh, it's not that bad. Next we have Flight of the Navigator. Um, this comes with chapter stops, pan and scan edition. There's no widescreen version of this film on Laserdisc, but you can get a Blu-ray which has the audio commentary by the director and it's in widescreen. But I think it's only in like stereo sound. I don't think it's in 5.1. The picture transfer is not bad. Uh, the sound is incredible and it comes with Alan Silvestri's fantastic score. No orchestra, it's all synth all the way through. One of my favorite scores by him. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's not a common title, it's, you know, there's quite a lot of collectors after this film, so I may sell it at some point, but um, but yeah, I'll keep hold of it for now. Next up is Oblivion. It's a kind of alien, kind of western movie, not Brave Star, sadly, <laughs> but um, produced by the Full Moon Entertainment, who kind of specialise in director video kind of feature films. It's got Mick Foster in it, um, George Takei. Uh, and apparently Isaac Hayes as well. Um, so I look forward to seeing this. Uh, I'm not sure if it's any good or not. Um, I'm sure some people in the comments will probably uh, let me know. Um, Pan and scan release, not widescreen, I'm afraid. Uh, and no chapter stops, which is a bit odd for a release from 1994. 
Next we have Wallace and Gromit. It's a US release, uh, released by BBC Video. Comes with grand day out, wrong trousers and a close shave. I mean, this is on TV in the UK all the time. You know, every Christmas it's on. Um, but the, a grand day out is not played that often. Uh, so I had to get it just for that because I haven't seen it for years. And um, the picture transfer is very good. You know, proper like broadcast quality. So it's you know, a bit of a novelty disc. You don't see this pop up that often on eBay. Next is Ardman Animations. Um, this is stuff Nick Park did before, um, I think it's uh, before The Wrong Trousers, maybe around the same time as um, A Grand Day Out. I'd say you, if it's CAV both sides, very short kind of animations. Um, bit of a, as I say, a bit of a novelty laser disc. Um, got it pretty cheap, but the quality, I mean, the disc, the sleeve itself is in pretty bad condition. It's all scratched up and stuff, but the disc was fine. Um, so oh, I'll probably keep hold of this for a while, maybe sell it on later on if I change my mind on keeping it. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Um, I've reviewed this movie before on my channel. Um, quite an old review actually, it's not that brilliant to be honest. You know, I don't like watching my old stuff. Um, it's a gatefold release. Um, i trying to stop the reflection of the light bouncing off this at the moment. Um, comes with a music video. The music video is right at the beginning, which is strange. Um, usually you find those sort of extras at the end, um, but yeah, so it's um, it's a very good transfer. It's, it's you know it's 1991, 92 kind of pressing. Um, the sound's very good, Dolby surround sound, not Dolby digital. Um, but Robin Hood, you know, this is the theatrical cut. This is not the extended version. So I kind of prefer the theatrical cut. I thought the extended one was a bit too long. Next up is a pretty bad movie, but it's a bit of a guilty pleasure of mine. Street Fighter the movie. Uh, this, is, this is the um, pan and scan edition, it's not widescreen. The director, Steve Lee D'Souza, said in the commentary for the collector's laserdisc, which is the signature collection, and you can get on the DVD and the Blu ray, that the pan and scan one was the closest to how he wanted it. Uh, it's, it looks closer to the video game, he said apparently. Um, this was going cheap, so I thought might as well grab it. Uh, the picture transfer is very good, and the sound is superb. Um, you can get a DTS version of this, which is blow your speakers away. It's very good sound mix, um, despite the movie being a little old garbage, but um, it's still very entertaining. Um, I'm going to be doing a commentary on this soon with Duncan and Richard, and uh, Duncan's never seen the film before, so we're going to make him watch it going in cold, so he doesn't know what to expect. So hopefully he'll enjoy it, but um, I'm guessing he'll find it to be absolute rubbish, but you know, we'll see. Next we have The Mask of Zorro, uh, Martin Campbell, directed feature, um, Antonio Banderas. I've, I only saw like the sequel, bits of it, when I was a projectionist, and I never saw the original. And I know, and, and I knew it got good reviews. I mean, it did, it did very well at the box office to sort of warrant a sequel. Um, but um, I, I was very impressed with it the first time I watched it all the way through. The picture transfer is very good. I was surprised because it was Columbia TriStar, which is, they always have good, picture transfers but I was worried that it might have laser rot but thankfully it didn't. Um, it's got production notes in the back and that's and I think that's about it. It's got Dolby Digital, it's in widescreen and one of the best things about this film which I absolutely loved was the explosion at the end. One of the best live action explosions I've ever seen. It was so cool but yeah I, I may review this at some point as a retrospective. Next we have the Criterion Collection of the Silence of the Lambs. Um, I had the Panascan edition, um, which unfortunately had laser on side too, so this was going relatively cheap. Uh, gatefold edition with loads of extras like commentaries, making of and you know um, production steals. This, this was the first THX approved Criterion release, apparently, it says on the back here. Um, I've not checked this out yet, the, the transfer, but um, Generally with Criterion, you get a good picture. This was going, yeah, so if you can find this cheap, definitely pick it up. Next we have Psycho by Alfred Hitchcock, the signature collection, comes with a making of, um, there's a booklet inside as well, uh, Bernard Herrmann's ice score isolated on the tracks, uh, uh, trailers, additional newsreel footage, quite a lot. Uh, I got this for eight pounds, so I was pretty happy with that. Very cool set, mint condition as well. And finally, we have Pleasantville, which is um, you know kind of a late '90s release. Very good picture, very good sound, and it has lots of extras as well. Um, it's a fantastic movie. If you've never seen Pleasantville, 
it's, it's a must watch. One of Toby Maguire's best performances. And this is what I saw. I saw him in this before I saw Spider-Man. Obviously this was released beforehand, but sometimes you know you often see films the other way around. Um, and I saw this on New Year's Eve, and I, I it was one of those, it was a strange year when I lost my wallet, and I couldn't go out. So on TV that, on New Year's Eve, was Pleasantville, and I watched that and I thought, wow, fuck it, I didn't need to go out, I just need to watch this, and it was one of the best movies. So I hope to review this movie at some point uh, as a retrospective, but um, it's, so I surprisingly got it very cheap. Um, it's quite, it's a late release in the 90s, and um, this often goes for quite high prices. I've seen in the past, maybe recently, the sort of people are less inclined to pick it up and just go for the, the Blu-ray, which is probably like worth a, like a fiver maybe, or 10 quid, but um, definitely worth seeking out. That's the end of the video. As I said earlier, Batman Begins will be available next week, and we have commentaries to Street Fighter the Movie with Duncan and Richard. Uh, Richard will be back doing Star Trek Generations with me. And me, Richard and Duncan will be doing a video special on TC2000 and a commentary to Watchmen, the director's cut. So look out for those. Okay everyone, take care and goodbye. If you enjoyed the video, you can find more on my YouTube channel. And also you can follow me on Twitter. If you want to help support the channel, you can donate through Patreon and receive monthly perks such as updates on the latest news on my channel, early access to reviews and commentaries before they go live on YouTube. Even the smallest donation can help keep this channel going. Thank you.